Alright guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we're going to be doing some pool planning for LDs only for the month of April and May. Now the last time I did this video was back in November where I talked about LD weapons that I was going to pull for, skip, etc, etc uh, for the month of January and December. But this time, seeing as our anniversary just uh, is about to end, and then of course I already made a video talking about some of the weapons for March, I'm like, okay, let's just go ahead and talk about April and May and talk about some of the LD weapons that I'm going to be pulling for, and then some that I would recommend uh, some of you guys to consider or uh, to pull for whenever they do drop. So, uh, in the comments section below if you guys want to let me know either before or after the video which LDs you are thinking about or still debating on pulling for uh, for the month of April and May and of course if you guys do enjoy the video consider liking the video and subscribing for future Opera Omnia content. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're not going to be talking about the BTs because, uh, I, you know, in my poor planning videos for BTs, uh, I, I talked about all the way up to April. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll at least briefly mention May uh, since uh, I have not covered that. So uh, for April, uh, you got Zach and Ramza. I already have both of those, so I only need the BT for Zach, and that's it. Uh, when it comes to Rydia, Rydia, the one nice thing about Rydia is going to be that with that debuff that she inflicts from her LD ability, basically makes it so that even if the enemies absorb water, they will still take weakness damage. A pretty unique mechanic. She was one of the first characters, and I believe there is a second character that does this as well, but don't quote me on that. Um, that has this type of mechanic where uh, it doesn't matter if the enemies absorb uh, water break damage. Uh, like, Rydia really is going to be like, uh-uh, you're taking this L, whether you like it or not. So, uh, I'm going to throw some tickets for her LD weapon. I think it's a pretty convenient ability to have. And uh, with that, uh, Trey's LD weapon is also going to be reran. I already have that, so I'm going to pass up on that. Uh, there is going to be a Vein BT rerun banner at the same time that this releases. Now, since Global tends to uh, change up the whole campaign banners and whatnot, um, do do take this video as well when it comes to these rerun banners or campaign banners with a grain of salt because like since global tends to change up things here and there um, I can't guarantee that some of these uh, LDs or BTs or whatever will be reran but I'm still gonna talk about them in case they do appear now there will be uh, what do you call it Sid Rain's launch chapter Steiner's um LD weapon gets featured on that, and I will be pulling for that LD weapon because that LD weapon is actually very nice, making it so so that after every play, or not player, but uh, every field action, he basically batteries the party similar to Cryo's EX ability with her overhead. So it's a very nice ability, and guess what? That buff does not expire. So, uh, you know, because with Cryo's, after five actions or so, whatever the amount is, um, her overhead disappears, but not with Steiner. Steiner, like, aside from the other party ores that he provides with that, he brings that lovely good amount of battery every every uh field turn so yeah definitely can't go wrong with that so i will be pulling for his ld weapon then there will be a spring festival campaign featuring shalada and selfie if you don't if for any players who do not have selfie make sure to pull for selfie selfie is really good during the shinyu era and for the following months to come so uh make sure to pull for that it's a very good ld weapon and she's getting a rework in c90 so definitely make sure to get it uh shalada's ld weapon i'm probably going to pass up on it only because like she is a bt candidate so she did get her bt and fr uh about a month or so ago so what I'll probably do, just to save resources for other banners, uh, I will probably pass up on it. Normally, I don't do this. Normally, I at least get the LD weapons, so that way I don't have to uh, worry about trying to get the LD weapons if they are BT candidate. But uh, I think this time I'm going to take the chance and um, not pull for her LD weapon. Now, the new character for April should be Anna Crow. Uh, Anna Crow, I'm not too I'm not too familiar with her kit, and to be honest with you, I never really used her after her event release. She seemed like an interesting character, uh, but like her 
her like overall kid and whatnot, it's very different because like she sets her like brave by like uh by like a certain number, like the certain like number on the on the last it's it's really weird. Like it's it's different uh compared to our normal characters. So what I probably do is I'm probably gonna pass up on her because she's not I mean, at least to me, she doesn't seem all all that interesting. So uh, I'll probably pass up on her. Uh, Reno's LD weapon does get reran as well. Uh, for those who are thinking about maybe pulling his FR in the future, because he is one of my favorite FRs uh, right now in JP. Uh, if you don't have his LD weapon, I mean, you can pull for it now or you can wait until his FR gets featured uh, in a couple months and uh, you can snag it then. Uh, after that will be the release of Laguna and Terra. Terra already have a kit. I ain't got to worry about her. Uh, Laguna gets a, gets his LD and BT. I will be pulling for his LD. And I guess I'll mention too that I'll, that I'll be pulling for his BT weapon as well. It's uh, very nice to have. His LD weapon for, provides him with follow-up attacks, which is good. And then his BT uh, effect uh, gives the or inflicts the enemy with gold framed debuffs that deal a certain amount of damage, I believe, based off of his attack by a huge percentage of his attack. Uh, so I will be pulling for him. Uh, and then when it comes to uh, the LDs of the banner, you got Lena and Shadow. I already have both of them. Uh, Lena's a great support. Shadow, he has evasion. And uh, he does uh, gain himself additional uh, free turns. I, I, you know, just like st stuff like that. Uh, but I already have those two LDs, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, Gauntlet's BT rerun banner uh, should be released alongside with Laguna and Terra. I already have Gauntlet. Actually, do I have his BT on Global? I do not know. I know I have his LD, but I, I can't remember if I have his BT or not. I think I do. Um, anyways, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off track. Um, Owen does get his LD weapon reran. Make sure for those who did not pull on Owen's, uh, Owen's uh, LD release initially, make sure to get it. Uh, and, you know, normally I don't tell players like, hey, you should pull for this, uh, this or that, or et cetera, et cetera. But like he becomes such a freaking good tank. And especially during FR eras. Yeah. Like he, he becomes really, really nice. I'd rec. Okay. So I, let me, let me, re let me re, re, reword what I said. I highly recommend that you get his LD weapon. Uh, cause it, it actually is really good. I, I would highly recommend it. Now, uh, Irvine. Uh, and uh, Saz get their LD weapons, or not, well, Saz already had his LD weapon, but uh, Irvine finally gets his LD weapon. Uh, I'm not really too interested in Irvine, so I'm going to pass up on Irvine. I mean, his kit, um, you know, it gives him like two new different abilities that cover up or they replace his HP and Brave Command, but uh, which, I mean, you guys can look into it uh, uh, on Irvine. I mean, like he, if I'm not mistaken, he does inflict a debuff with one and a Think the I can't remember. I, 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 I you know what? Let's let's look it up. Why not? All right, Irvine abilities. So, uh, the one the the brave version, Dark Ammo, does inflict a debuff, which is defense down, brave poison by 100% of initial brave, HP damage resist down, and then hit rate down by 50%, and then his HP command pulse ammo. Uh, it looks like it's just a damage dealer that does increase EX recast gauge, and that's about it. So, yeah, those, I, it doesn't really sound too, too interesting. Uh, it's not, I mean, if, at least for me, it, uh, it wasn't really all that. So I am probably going to pass up on his LD, and maybe it'll get featured later on. Then maybe I can snag it, but, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not really too interested in his LD, to be honest with you. And then Sans already have his LD weapon, so I'm not... Uh, I don't have to worry about that. So this banner is a complete skip for me. Actually, no. I'll, uh, let, let me let me say what I normally say. I'll probably throw some tickets at the banner, but that's about it. Uh, there will be a raid event. Thank good with his LD weapon uh, gets featured, and then Maria's uh, LD weapon gets reran. I already have Maria's LD weapon, so I ain't, I ain't too worried about it. When it comes to Thancred, though, uh, Thancred, yeah, he didn't really get the goods, but because he is a 14 character, I will be pulling for his LD weapon. His LD ability, let's look it up real quick. Ah, oh, my God, they did my boy. They did my boy wrong. They really did. But um, basically, it just gives him uh, 
Max stolen max brave overflow up, HP damage up, brave damage up, and then when inflicting a target afflicted with the trick attack debuff, he gets a uh, brave dam or gets an increase in a uh, brave damage up, and then while at five stacks, it upgrades his HP attack to trick attack, and then um, his uh, LD boards extensions adds more brave damage as well. So yeah, it doesn't really. It's not like oh my god, it's so freaking good. Uh, it's it's average. I, but I still feel like they did my boy wrong. But that's just me. That's just my opinion, and uh, and also the fact that I play that I have played fourteen. So uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's see. Now we move on to May. So May, uh, the BT units at the beginning of this month, or that month, excuse me, will be uh, Kyrian and Vaughn. Uh, Vaughn already have his kit, so he's a f easy upgrade. Uh, Kyrian already have his LD weapon. And his uh, BT weapon basically just like provides a whole lot more. Okay, so his BT effect is almost, but not entirely, uh, similar to Ramza with what he does, aside from like a couple differences. But uh, yeah, I will definitely for sure be pulling for his BT because uh, his ores are fantastic. And his BT effect just adds more to it. Now, with that, uh, General Leo finally gets his LD weapon in a rework. I would recommend picking up. Uh, his LD weapon, uh, because uh, as a call ability, yes, as a call ability, um, he basically makes it so that, um, so when you look at it, uh, and you may have noticed this for those who uh, look at JP gameplay, so his mechanic basically makes it so that you are dealing uh, additional damage separate from the total HP damage that you did. So basically, it deals additional fixed HP damage on HP attacks by 10% of current max brave cap and cannot that cannot be boosted. So when you think about it, let's say if you just did a total damage of 400k, right under that will be that additional damage from uh, from this effect right here that will deal a little bit of extra additional damage. But as a call ability, I would... Uh, uh, I actually use this, uh, I use it quite often when, when I finally got this LD, and I use it here and there during the Shinryu era, and it's actually pretty convenient uh, to have that little bit of additional uh, HP damage onto the enemies. So, and of course, uh, that D, that buff also provides the party with a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I will be pulling for that LD weapon. It served me well, and uh, yeah, that's really much, that's pretty much like the, the I guess like, the fastest way to sum it up. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Osceola with an LD. I'd recommend picking it up. It's a it's a very good LD ability. That debuff is is uh, pretty nasty, even as a call ability as well. Uh, it's actually a very good uh, debuff that she does inflict onto the enemy. So I would recommend uh, if you do have the extra resources, and for those who do not have it, I'd recommend uh, throwing some tickets and maybe uh, hopefully you get lucky lucky to get it. Uh, there will also also. Also, be uh, a rerun for Eustola's BT and then uh, Setzer's LD weapon. I mean, do I really have to say much about Setzer? I think everybody knows about Setzer. Uh, moving on. <laughs> uh, there will be an intersecting wills for uh, Seymour with his LD weapon. And then Eustola's LD weapon gets rerun. That is so weird. Eustola BT rerun banner. Eustola's LD featured again. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, so Steiner's, uh, not Steiner's, Seymour's, I don't know why it said Stein, uh, Steiner, Seymour's LD ability is actually not too bad, because, like, basically, the lower the HP that the boss has, the more additional HP dumps that he will be dishing out, so it's actually pretty good, and the damage output is actually really, really high, so... Uh, aside from that, uh, he does grant a, a a new buff as well, uh, preparing to annihilate, which gives him the following thingies. Uh, ready to annihilate is pretty much the same thing. Um, the debuff, though, makes it so the enemy gets inflicted with attack down, brave damage resist down, and HP damage resist down. And that, if I'm not mistaken, also applies to his call ability. So, yes, it does. So, uh, it's actually a pretty good call ability to have, and even as a character himself, uh, because of the amount of damage output that he now deals, he's actually not a bad pickup, so I'll be picking up his LD weapon when it gets released later on. Um, now, there will be a Heretic challenge with uh, Alphanard finally getting his LD... No, he already has his LD weapon, doesn't he? 
No, I'm thinking JP. Derp. Um, yeah, so he finally gets his LD weapon, and then Waka gets reran as well with his LD weapon. Uh, Alphanaut with his uh, LD weapon is basically like a big HP, not a big, but like it's an HP poison uh, for what that debuff does. So it's a bio 2 and a... Uh, I'm not even going to pronounce that because, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's an HP poison by 50% of the Inflictor's attack. But with his L character boards and whatnot, it becomes 100%. So it is a pretty potent, um, uh, what you call it, HP poison onto the enemy. And then he also provides these ores to the party. So I will be picking him up because he is a 14 character. And, uh, and that, that, uh, the... What do you call it? The HP poison is actually not too bad. Now, finally, we're going to get towards the end. Now, the Six Warrior Quest beta. I'm curious to see if if our globe is going to be doing this as well. I assume they are because, I mean, there is a BT, BT featured on this. So, I'm going to assume that they are. But uh, Snow's BT gets featured and Emperor finally gets his BT+. Plus. Uh, I will be picking up Snow's BT because his BT effect is really, really solid. And I would highly recommend uh, doing research on that and looking up gameplay because uh, his BT effect to the party is really good. Um, Emperor, of course, he's a damage dealer, so I mean, that's really not much to say. Uh, he does get a rework, which makes his damage output so much better, and he needed that for the longest time, so very happy with that. But uh, for sure, I will be picking up Snow's BT weapon. Now, with that, uh, Lise finally gets her LD weapon and a rework. Now, Lise's LD weapon if I'm not mistaken, does provide stuff to the party. So let's look that up real quick because I can't, I can't remember everything. Um, so it provides the party with all of this right here. And, and her damage output, uh, in my opinion, is actually really, really good. I mean, you got five HP dumps in total. He, she does get a rework uh, later on. And uh, she does increase Brave Gain to 50% percent of the HP damage dealt after each HP attack except for the last. So yeah, best believe your girl is going to be dishing out some very good damage. Uh, again, another 14 character will be pulling for it just because 14. Uh, Baltia gets his LD weapon. Uh, we ran. Uh, or if you guys... Uh, base, I mean, Baltia, he loves to steal buffs and whatnot. His LD ability does party cleanse. Uh, yeah, party cleanse of, of uh, any debuffs that you have inflicted onto you so if you need that you can snag it if not you can wait for his fr weapon uh which actually just released a few days ago on jp as i'm recording this video now uh zidane's bt does get a reran so if you need that you can grab it ferris's ld does get reran as well so if you need that call ability uh now's a good time to get it if not you can wait until her fr weapon gets uh released um the mayfair campaign whoo we're almost done the Mayfair campaign uh, f will feature Freya's LD weapon and will also have a rerun for uh, Nine's LD weapon. Now, Freya's LD weapon, uh, again, I can't remember anything. I can't remember everything, so. Uh, <laughs> so, her LD weapon provides uh, the overhead, which is very similar to what uh, Kane has uh, wh whenever you use his LD uh, ability and then his, uh, what you call it, his one, his HP command, uh, HP command or Braver command, one of the two, uh, changes so that he can go into the sky. Well, guess what? Freya can do that too. So uh, her overhead now provides the party with all of the stuff that you see there. And then the Lance ability while she is in the air is a, uh, a follow-up attack and it's only one HP p dump uh but she does increase the party's brave by 50 percent of the hp damage dealt with party hp heal by 30 percent of the hp damage dealt. so those are those are some of the differences that you see right there and it also doesn't consume brave so i'm um, not a bad ld ability at all i will be picking that up because i do enjoy uh the mechanics that she has and then um Rajin's uh, LD weapon with uh, his intersecting wheels gets, uh, yeah, he finally gets his LD weapon in rework. Kadash does return as well with a rework and LD. Rajin's uh, LD ability I would highly recommend uh, you pick up. It's actually really good. And as a call ability, it's good as well because it does the following things. It inflicts with a debuff that is a 100% HP, HP damage down, basically making it so that the the enemy will not deal damage to you and an HP damage resist down by 20% so it will deal additional HP damage onto the enemy and then 
to make this debuff even better, uh, it adds a 100% attack down and the enemy cannot inflict debuffs. So very good call ability, uh, not call, it, it, very good as a call ability uh, to have. And, and it's actually very convenient uh, for some of the Shinryu fights that, uh, that I recently uh, had to deal with. So one that I will be picking up again just for those uh, Shinryu fights. Now, Dimensions and Transcendence campaign, uh, you have the return of Locke. Uh, no, and knock this. So you have a chance of, you know, grabbing those BTs again if you want. And then finally, to end it off, <clears throat> uh, we should have Cisne with her LD weapon. And you got uh, Zidane who gets a rework and his LD. I think everybody's pretty familiar with Zidane. Delete turns. Yeah. Um, and then with Cisne, though, Cisne is a character that I would highly recommend uh, people get as well. She is really good as a character because with her LD ability, if I can get to it. So her LD ability uh, grants her the Turks Nova, which uh, provides party ores, like a shooting star, uh, makes it so that the blazing wild throw, which is her overhead stacks, will not decrease. Now, depending on the amount of stacks that you have, will trigger uh, uh, attacks onto the enemy. So after any party's members turns, it, it triggers surrounded and then at two stacks around a plus and then three stacks around a plus plus and let me see if i can find any details on the um ba, 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 ba. let's see hold on where are you hmm hmm aha here we go okay so the overhead so at one stack it deals uh a it's a one hp dump that deals splits hp damage right so uh, at two stacks you will be dealing uh two hp dumps in total and then finally at three stacks uh you will be dealing uh three hp dumps in total and uh, again this triggers after every uh field action if i'm not mistaken let me look at that again uh, yeah, so after, excuse me, not field action, but after any party member's turn, uh, it triggers uh, one of those two stacks. So I would highly recommend picking up Cisne because, like, she is super good to have during the Shinryu era and to be able to shave off the enemy's HP faster and faster, like having her on the team or even bringing her as a friend support. Very, very, very good character, in my opinion, just for all of that, and I still see her in some runs here and there. Not as much now, but I, I, I see her in like a few videos, but like during the beginning of Shinryu era, yeah, best believe she will help you out greatly. So, uh, but yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think on what I went over for the month of April and May. Let me let me know if there's any characters that I may have convinced you or may, 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 have made you think about uh, debating or, you know, debating if you want to pull the character or not is what I'm trying to say uh, down in the comment section below. And as always, if you guys did enjoy the video, consider liking the video and subscribing for future Opera Omnia content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.